Hello friends. So in the previous session, we have just started with the cumulatively compound DC generator. All right. So in this particular session, we will be uh, deriving the terminal characteristics of the cumulatively compound DC generator. So I have already drawn and kept. So in the last session, I think before concluding, I just forgot to write one equation here. So the net uh, field actually, the total field MMF, sorry, for total MMF in the machine will be actually due to the one which is caused by the field. Let me call it as field MMF by the field winding or the shunt winding in the case. And you know that the series winding is cumulatively coupled, right? So this also will help in uh, strengthening the field. So plus the MMF due to the series winding and of course our villain armature reaction will try to reduce the MMF. All right. So if I write uh, the effective current, that means the IF star. So this will be NF into IF star equal to NF into IF. All right. Plus and what will this MMF be equal to NSC into ISC or that is the armature current only minus armature reaction MMF equivalent armature reaction MMF. So this IF star will be equal to then IF plus NSC divided by NF into ISC minus armature reaction MMF divided by NF. This is the equation. Now one thing I want to make it clear here is that <coughs> don't think that this ink this now this for a cumulatively compound this plus sign. So you might think that the IF is actually increasing in this particular uh, generator. But remember this IF or the ISH is exactly same as VT by RSH only. It is not actually, you cannot see the increase if you put an ammeter, all right. So what this IF star is representing is actually the current that would be present, the field current that would be present due to the flux increase. Now you know that due to this increase in flux because of all this NSC term here, the flux will increase, okay. So this IF star actually represents that increase in flux. Okay, so it is a uh, replacement value. You are just putting it in terms of current rather than flux. So the current will, which will be, it will be IF only, but for all our theoretical purposes, we'll be taking IF star for graphs and all. Okay, so the current which flows through the shunt winding will be always IF, all right? So IF star is the uh, current that you are assuming would flow due to, for, to explain that increase in flux, all right? So that is one thing which I want to clear here. So now let's go for the terminal characteristics. Now the equation that will govern is Vt is equal to Ea minus Ia into Ra plus Rsc. So this is the terminal characteristics. So what do we do? Let us connect the load and let us start to increase the value of Il. Okay. And uh, you know that Ia is equal to Il plus the Ish. So you are increasing Il. So Ia would increase. So Il means Ia would increase. Okay. Now this increase in Ia now is going to produce two effects. All right. So let us take the first effect now. So Ia increases. So Ia Ra increases. Okay. Now if Ia Ra increases, what would happen? Vt which is equal to Ea minus Ia into Ra plus Rsc. Okay. This is actually Ra plus Rsc. Okay. Ra plus Rsc. So this would increase. That means Vt would reduce. So in case one, Vt is reducing with the increase in the load. Okay. As IL increases, VT decreases. So this is one case. So let us take the next case here. So IA is increasing as usual. But look at this NSE into ISC term here. Okay, ISC is equal to IA. That means IA increases. That means that is equal to ISC. That also increases. That implies the NSC into ISC also increases. Okay, that means the MMF uh, in the series winding increases. Now that is cumulatively coupled with the shunt winding. Okay. So that means because it is cumulatively coupled, this will help increasing the flux now. So NSE, NSE into ISE increases. That means flux would increase. Now if flux increases, what will happen? When flux increases, Ea which is equal to K phi into omega. Now omega is constant. So flux would increase, Ea would increase. Now what would happen to Vt if Ea increases? Vt is equal to Ea minus Ia into Ra plus Rsc. So Ea is increasing, that means Vt is increasing. Now you are having 
two opposing results for the same increase so you are increasing current so in this particular case you are getting a decrease in voltage and in this particular case you are getting an increase in voltage so what is happening here so basically who will win iara drop or the increase in ea that is decided by how much of turns you are providing in the series winding okay so it depends upon the nse into isc or it actually depends upon the value of nse all right so i'll just write it here iara drop ia into ra plus rsc drop versus ea increase okay who wins okay it is decided actually by the number of turn decided by the number of series turns that you are providing okay so let us take three cases now okay now first one let us case that the nsc is very small okay the nsc value is very small now if nsc value is very small that means nsc into isc also is very small okay that means the increase in flux is very negligible okay the increase in flux is very small that means increase in flux is flux is very small so who wins here the iara drop the ia into ra plus rsc drop will dominate will dominate okay so in this case what would happen is that the generator would start at vt okay because it has a shunt winding okay it starts at vt then it would drop like this but it would have a better characteristics as compared to the shunt winding because there is a presence of a series winding the drop will not be as uh, bad as the <coughs> not as bad it will not be as drooping as the shunt winding it will be a little bit better okay so in this case what would happen is that the vt at full load will be less than the vt at the no load vt at the no load okay and this types of uh, compounding is actually called uh under compounding that means you have produced uh, given only less number of turns okay now you are making nsc is a little bit large okay nsc is larger this is the second case okay now here what happens you are having sufficient amount of nsc all right so what would happen is that initially there will be a flux increase okay there will be a flux increase and definitely there will be an ea increase so initially ea will dominate initially ea will dominate okay initially ea will dominate but when will ea stop dominating you know that ea is equal to k phi omega therefore the series winding mmf also can uh, increase the pole uh, flux till saturation so once ea is equal to k phi omega and flux is equal to flux is saturated the ea increase will stop there right after saturation so after saturation ea will be equal to a constant value and once ea is not increasing the only thing which is increasing is iara drop right so i'll just write that equation also here vt is equal to ea minus ia into ra plus rsc so initially ea also was increasing and therefore you had a vt of a vt also would increase but after some time ea would uh, saturate sorry the flux would saturate and ea will be constant and the only thing increasing with load will be the iara drop and therefore vt will start dropping but the good thing here is that you can make design the winding in such a way that the vt at the full load condition is exactly equal to vt at the no load condition and this type of compounding is called the flat compounded generator flat compounded generator okay now the third case you are having nsc is very large nsc is very large okay so in this case what would happen the ea would increase for a longer time okay now in this case nsc what happens is that nsc into isc is having a limit okay it having a limit because nsc is might not be very large okay but in this nsc is very large so it can produce an mmf of greater flux okay it can produce an mmf of Uh, which can uh, in turn make the machine poles have more flux okay 
more as compared to this particular case here so in that case also ultimately when the machine is going to saturate the iara drop is going to dominate but it can supply more flux for more time okay so in this case what will happen is that the vt at full load will be greater than the vt at no load okay and this type of thing is called the over compounding of generators over compounding of generators so now let's take the graphs and see now let us make some graphs and things will be much more clearer okay so this is vt sorry this is vt and this is your il okay so this is your no load vt so this is vt at no load okay so now let us take a shunt generator for reference okay so this is going to be my uh, shunt generator characteristic let us take this as to be the shunt generator now it will not be as poor but for explanation sake i am making it little bit drooping okay so this is the reference and this is the shunt generator characteristics okay now i told you let us take the first case which is the under compounded case so under compounding the characteristic will droop all right droop but ultimately it will be better than the shunt generator characteristic because you are having that series winding which is help to increase the flux a little bit okay and the amount of increase depends upon the value of nsc which is selected because mmf is equal to nsc into isc so here what happens you are having the it will be a little bit better but ultimately it's going to droop like this okay now let me just take one point which just represents the full load current so this is ifl okay so you can see that at this particular point okay at this point vt for an under compound generator at full load okay so that value is less than the vt at the no load condition now the second uh, idea is to have a flat compound generator so in flat compound generator so what happens initially the nsc is sufficiently large so flux is more so actually the voltage would increase like this okay the voltage would increase like this and but once this saturation is going to set it would decrease 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 but you have designed the winding in such a way that it exactly passes like this okay so here this is the uh, for the flat compound okay and this one is for the under compound okay and this is the vt and here you can see that vt at the full load is equal to vt at the no load condition all right so it is exactly passing the full load point here now in over compounding what happens you are having a large number of turns and the flux generated is also much higher so what happens is that you are having a <coughs> increase in vt like this like this it would go and it would be more than the no load terminal voltage so vt so this is the full load current and this will be the vt at the full load condition for a over compound generator okay so this is the over compound over compound generator okay so what we have learned here is that in cumulatively compound generators you are having three types of compounding one is the under compound then you have the flat compound and you are having the over compound in the under compound you are having only less number of nsc turns therefore the additional flux with the series winding can provide also is very less so therefore it would have a better characteristic as compared to the shunt generator but ultimately iara is going to win in the flat compound you are having a little bit larger number of turns but the windings are designed in such a way that at the full load condition okay and the no load condition vt will have the same value and that is a good characteristic the regulation is good at that time now in over compounding what you do you provide nsc so large that it is providing a higher number of flux so it it uh, develops much more flux the machine develops much more flux such that the vt at the full load condition is greater than the vt at the no load condition see ultimately at some point this also will come down the machine has to saturate somewhere right so it will also come down but it will be at a higher load current but we are always bothered about the full load current because that is the rated current of the machine you don't have to go in this particular area so all our explanation we stop at the full load condition usually but to explain the total characteristic we might go a little bit more that way you can understand the machine a little bit better all right so i hope you have understood today's particular session this is a very important topic and mostly <coughs> the generators which are used are usually compound generators which have a profile 
which is suiting to your application so in the next session let us uh, do the analysis proper analysis of the characteristics like we have done for other generators so if you have like this video please like share and subscribe the channel if you are having any doubts please put them in the comments below and i'll see you in the next video thank you